Hello Chipsters, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Today we have the number four in the beginner wall game figure painting series. A bit of a mouthful. Uh, it's just the hat and the shoes uh, and the buttons. A uh, bit of metallic on those and the metallic on the uh, buckles as well. I've shot this. Sit up a bit, Gav. We'll get a bit closer. Uh, I've shot these. This intro now. Uh, see, it's a bit darker. Um, I've got all the other lights on, uh, but I've I've obviously painted uh, the <laughs> painted the figure. Yeah, of course I have, or I wouldn't be doing an intro. <laughs> it. Oh, good. Anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, so the next instalment after this one, as I've said, I'll say on the video, is the flesh and the, there's a like little neckerchief to to go on. I just thought if I'd painted it now, I'm bound to get flesh colour all over it, so I'll just leave it off. Um, and then we'll do a little base. Uh, and when I say little base, it will just be a normal MDF base as it would be for any wargaming figure. Uh, nothing special. Uh, maybe a couple of rocks or something and, and some tufts of grass and that's it. Uh, but I just thought we might as well show how I normally do them. I do vary it. Like most of my stuff, I'll suddenly think, well, you know what, I'm going to do it this way on for this particular batch of soldiers. Uh, but, yeah. So uh, I think that's everything. <laughs> <laughs> shooting a video after you've done it uh, yeah um, that's that's everything so hope you enjoy the video uh, when I shot it as it is a bit now um, it's quite warm still here in the UK and we've all got our windows open and today's video I had a lot of ambient noise we've got idiots with car horns and uh, just all sirens going past the usual stuff that most of us have with windows open when we're filming so um yeah, hope you enjoy it. As I said on the video, um, it is what it is. It's it's nothing fancy. Um, I'm not. Uh, I keep saying maybe one day I'll edit stuff. I have no idea if I ever will get round to that. As I say in the video, this is my uh, this little workbench. Really, is is it? Um, I'm looking round because I'm just thinking I can't put. I, I did a ship video earlier on and realised that even with my. Uh, tripod camera <laughs> I still couldn't get the blooming ship into <laughs> into view um, but I'm not suddenly building lighting rigs and camera rigs all around me it is uh, you know my my videos are rough and ready uh, I keep calling them fire and forget uh, they're, they're nothing special uh, but hopefully it's a bit of company for you as you paint your figures or you make your kits because um, your videos are the same for me so Look after yourselves guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will get the, the flesh, which is what all people like to see, uh, and that's going to be fun, <laughs> trying to paint that uh, on the camera. But um, yeah, we'll get onto that as soon as I can uh, and uh, then onto the, the basin after that, not long after that. And then we'll do one of those Wild West figures I'd shown on a previous video. Look after yourselves. Right guys, uh, here we are back at the bench and uh, it's we're going to be doing the felt hat and hopefully the shoes as well. Uh, I'm not 100%, uh, we'll put the brass buttons on because we've got to do the buckles and that so I've, I've blacked out the the buttons ready for putting some uh, metallic paint on them. Uh, we may do the neckerchief, I'm not 100% sure yet, uh, we'll see how we go. Right guys, I've given uh, the hat another coat and you'll see I've done uh, just to speed things up and to let them dry out a bit uh, while I'm doing the hat. I've put a brown leather on the shoes. Now they won't be as brown as that. I'm going to um, sh really uh, shade them out with some, some different colours. Uh, but uh, And I'll probably put a second coat on those as well. Um, but they'll be they'll probably be uh, shaded out. Um, uh, to give them a more dark, dark appearance uh, with the rest of the night. Like, not exactly tying with a hat, but I didn't just want to do black hat, and black, uh, black shoes. Uh, so I've used, uh, as I say, I'm quite, I'm, I'm a big fan of this uh, from AK, the rubber black, uh, which is is like a grey, grey black with um, with like a brown in it. It, it, it. When it dries, you've got that brown look to it. Uh, well you know brown, brown brown black look to it but we're going for the old uh, the good old standby of uh, Vallejo uh, black grey uh, 
and that's just to give us some highlights. As I said to you guys, it's always a bit, uh, without my painting lamp has to sit above this uh, camera, so it's not always easy actually seeing what you're, what you're painting. But uh, grey black always works well on on black, obviously for a for a a highlight. So I'll keep going to to highlight the edges of the hat, but it's going to have the the orange band around it. So pretty pointless, really. Um, wouldn't really see a highlight under there, but we'll just put a bit just to fade out the, the hat slightly. Keep the shadow areas closer to the to the face. As I say, you wouldn't really see it under there. That a bit of artistic license, really. But and where the hat lifts up slightly, at the back will go closer to the to the head. Right guys, uh, off camera I've uh, put a base coat down over, the, over our black hat and that was medium flesh so I'll quickly do that because I've got some paint on the end of me. Where are we? Oh, come on. Right, medium flesh. And that's our uh, base over the black. Right, let's get one. I'll use the side of the point of the brush. Uh, I've made a mix up this, this orange. It might take a few coats. Um, this is a, just a, some scarlet and uh, yellow put together uh, to give us an orange. As I say, we don't have to be worrying about how orange it looks against the other the other you know bits on your uniform of your bloke here because you know it, it, they all came from different manufacturers or different dyes or whatever you know. So you're in no way you're going to have one exactly like the other. And I said to you guys, I, I do think it, uh, it just adds a bit of difference. I mean, in the end, I didn't get the, the socks as, as dark as I wanted them. And I'm still half a mind to go back and try and darken those up a bit more, uh, just to give us a bit of difference. I think they're a bit too close to the, to the cuffs. Again, just use that side of the brush, obviously, rather than the point itself. Uh, and it'll hopefully give you, you... You're sometimes still, especially with a wavy hat like this, as you can see, it goes all over the shop. Um, so uh, you may well find that you do get a bit of overspill. Uh, but we're talking a black hat, you know, so just put... Go to your original darkest colour, your black-brown. And just it might take a couple of a couple of passes over with a brush, but you'll soon get it back to how it was. And rather than use the hair dryer while that bit dries off, I'll uh, I'll do the inner band. Again with these, uh, when I've done them before, although I don't believe I've done them, this is more for ten mil. I've got a little ten mil collection. If you don't know of of 1690s Williamite uh, army, um, you know you can you can lift leave some hat band silk off. You know they don't all have to have have a coloured uh, coloured outside rim. I mean these these were like uh, cotton. I don't know if they're really silk. Uh, not for common soldiers anyway. Uh, and obviously the time period of getting silk. Um, they're often called, called silk at this, you know, when people are discussing this, I'm thinking, I don't think they are, because 
obviously only getting so much stuff from China and that, so I think it's more a, a cotton band. Might be wrong. Not as if I know particularly much about the subject, but uh, but yeah, um, you can leave the outside band off and just say I've one with a centre band. Uh, you know, if you really want to make them looking obviously all uniform, then obviously just go ahead and and do what this guy's got here. You know, both. Um, but it just if you if you're doing a, a unit, it's again it's just it's just adds that bit of difference, you know, compared to uh, just just going on an automated paint <laughs> painting and and just doing everything the same, you know. Uh, it just gives a bit of character, I always believe, to it to a, a unit, or even if it's just you know a couple of a couple of figures on a base. Bit too much paint on me brush then. I was going to say, make sure you like. I'm, I'm, I'm wiping. Well, I didn't that time, but uh, I, I'm wiping uh, my brush off slightly on that bit of kitchen towel again, because uh, again, you do, especially doing trying to do a, a flat edge. You don't want to, you know, deposit a great big pile of paint in one go. Um, so I mean, looking down. That to me doesn't particularly need any clean up because I think if you're gonna if you're gonna do any clean up on that you're you're probably gonna end up getting the black paint on top of the orange paint at the side. Uh, the centre band is just a very slightly more problematical uh, because you have to use the point, and I'd suggest unless you've got a massively steady hand, you do it in sections. Uh, also, if you notice. I always keep, uh, this is just me painting, obviously you could do it differently, uh, but is it, uh, yeah, this 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 finger here, <laughs> next to what I was called, next to the little finger, that's, uh, I always rest it, if I'm, I'm doing something like that, I rest it on my finger here, uh, like so, if you can see that. And that'll give you a, you know, where, where you hopefully you're not going to, move too much and so you, you can use those with the fancy paint stands you know with, the, with those metal hand hold doobries over the top but uh, you can often get away with doing something like this on that corner there so it might need a bit of clean up as I say especially if you're using dark paint when you're cleaning up things like that you've got to be careful because it's going to be you're going to have back to having to blot it out with the original base colour before you put the orange on but yeah you know that's oh, there we go that's roughly our guy I'm fairly happy with that again when I've got my light down I'll have one last look that there will be um, one big clean up as I call it over the whole figure when I've when I've uh, got everything down on paint wise um, so you know it's it's inevitable you're gonna have the odd bit of over spill of paint or you're not happy with a particular shadow area or highlight you know um, and you just need to tidy it up a bit right we're gonna just dab a bit of Vallejo whole red um, I've got to get me some more of this actually, it's quite a good colour. Um, I'll just quickly show it because sometimes pronouncing hull uh, with my accent might be a bit too much for some people, not really understood. So that's what I'm using uh, whole red. Uh, I find it very good for. For reds, uh, for reds, for for putting on browns, uh, blacks, it doesn't really matter. Uh, again, we're going to be putting a a shadow coat around this as well. So.
So we're really going going away from the actual base brown. The brace brown is just literally what it is. It's a base. Uh, there's not a lot of shoe, obviously, really to to, to see here. Uh, a tip is you can't see it really much on this one, um, but when when a figure's got its 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 shoe up, if it's a if it's not so much a rubber sole, if it's a rubber sole as a modern combat boot, obviously put a lighter colour on so it shows up. Uh, unless you really are going to put mud around it or something. Um, if it's a you know more of a a shoe, you know or boot, you know, Napoleonics wise, just, just put a patch of lighter colour just to show a, a sole of a, of a shoe, it just, again, it's just general interest. So what we're going to do now is do go back to Gav standby of rubber black and we're just going to put that in some places as well. As usual, I decided to keep the camera on and now I've stuffed up the paint mix. Let's start trying again, Gav. So, this one's watered down to a more of a wash than a it's not a glaze, a glaze would be a lot thinner than that, it would be very transparent. Uh, the wash tends to be obviously you, can, you can't see through it. So, where are we with Gav's thumb? So Yes, I know it's going on transparent there, but when you look at it on the palette, you you can't uh, you can't see through it. But that's roughly what we're going to be putting on as a as a wash, and what you'd put into any other shadow areas that you want to on the figure, if that's what you're going to do. Uh, you can usually get away with it with that consist constituency. So we haven't got a lot of area to play with here, so it's it's you know it's it's not really gonna have that much of an effect, it, but it just takes it away from that first base colour. And we'll look at doing a maybe another highlight on it just to uh just to bring that up slightly. I think that's what we'll uh, keep it like that for now. As I say, when I do my clean up, I might be going round and filling in more shadow areas and whatever. But uh, we've got to put some some buckles on those as well. But before we do that, we'll have a a last uh, highlight. Right, guys, uh, the last highlight I've done on the boots, which I've done off camera, uh, I just used the medium flesh we'd already got on the palette that we did the. The base around the on top of the black for the hat bands, uh, and providing that you wipe again a bit of the paint off so it's not too bright, it it will give you a a highlight that isn't too strong. Again, the lights are showing it up more here. And don't get me wrong, you could just easily go with different browns and and stuff. Uh, I'm not saying you couldn't. Uh, and as I say, that there isn't always the amount of of shoe there to go at. Uh, that you you could probably get away with, um, you know, not doing the, the the shadow areas like I did with the rubber black and that. It's entirely up to you. Uh, I just like uh, messing around with the paint, really. <laughs> uh, now we're going to go uh, with the good old um, for the brass. I just use this because it's going to have a an ink wash over the top of it. Uh, we're going to go over uh, with a bit of soft tone. Uh, this is what I don't. Re I, this is really the only time I use these army painters. Uh, is is really to um, uh, to do the bring the, the the metallic flex down a bit on the on the actual uh, uh, you know anything well anything metallic really. 
sometimes I will just use water paint. The the only the only thing I've got against well, I say I've got against it. I use it a fair bit. Different water paint on top of metallic, but uh, it will sometimes if it's if there's too much paint in there, it will really flat out the brass too much. Uh, but it's quite handy to use on on um, doing helmets and things, uh, as in you know English Civil War helmets, medieval helmets, whatever. Uh, and in in a future figure of some description, we'll we'll have a go at that. Uh, I keep saying the, the, these I, I've labelled them at the beginning, you know, beginners painting. Uh, really, now that they're, they're more getting into, you know, just just. <laughs> I paint and <laughs> presumably you're painting or modeling at the site uh, you know that I, I can't teach you to suck eggs you know it's 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 not all, all the all the words come out there it's not rocket science you know it's just how I do something um, there's loads of people doing full-on tutorials and and and, and whatever on uh, on obviously YouTube and blogs and things Um, I did used to try and mix a bit of. Sorry, I'm just trying to concentrate here. Uh, I did used to try and mix a bit of the ink, as I call, because you know I just call them inks. Uh, I, I did try and mix a bit of the inks in with the actual metallics, and uh, I never really was happy with the results. So now. If I'm doing say 18 millimeter, I'm putting a Napoleonic unit up. Uh, I'm commission painting at the moment, the first unit up. Um, that actually has paint mixed directly into the uh, into the the metallic itself. Uh, but uh, for something like this, that's slightly bigger, uh, I just decided to go straight straight in there with the with the metallic. Uh, as I said to you guys before, it's it's always handy to have a separate jar of water uh, for your metallic paint, just in case you do still get flecks of of metallic onto your onto your bristles, and then put it, you know, then you're painting something on the figure, and then you end up at seeing seeing flecks of, uh, of metal in there. I can see one tiny piece on here already. Um, as I say, I'm not painting with the full light on this side. I normally would have because it's it's not showing up. Oh, my pop Archie in the background is most disgruntled. He had a good run out yesterday, and today he's not gone out, so he's a bit uh, he's a bit peeved. I got two on the cuffs. Which are slightly larger. I just put a, a, a some type of dark paint backing uh, on lighter colours just to make them stand out more. As you can see, I didn't do it on the on the ones on the jacket because they were already dark paint. And I'm still doing all this with a. I mean, that's a fairly size, fair size brush. I'm still doing that with the uh, size one. Just using the very tip. Now you don't have to um, put any type of wash over the over the brass if you like uh, the real shine of the brass, gold or silver, whatever you're putting on. Obviously, there's no uh, no hard and fast rules. I think that's it for the brass. I don't think there's any. These ones stick out a bit on the on the cuffs. So. Just reapply a bit more on there. Yep, I think that's our guy. I don't actually think. I'm not sure. I'll. I'll uh, 
not put any ink on that actually, even the buckles are fairly subdued, I've not put a, a heavy load of paint on them. The surface area isn't particularly big to get a real real sparkle effect, so that's not too bad. I might keep that keep that as it is. Right guys, we'll call that we'll call that done for this video. I'm not going to do the neckerchief only because it's right under the chin uh, and I think I would prefer to to get the the face done and then uh, meet up with it or put up at the same time as doing the face and the hair I'll do a base coat on the on the neckerchief uh, and then do the face and hair and then we'll do the we'll, uh, and the hands and we'll do the the neckerchief as a last as a last one So as I say, the figure will still probably. I'm still. I, I can't see properly with this blooming light. So I need to check over the shoes again just to just to see. Uh, I might add some more lining around the the buckles to to make them uh, more shadow. You know, as if as if they're standing proud a bit more. Um, but yeah, uh, and I'll just have to check around this hat band when I can see properly that it's what I want it to be. But there's our uh, there's our last stage. Well, last stage. There's our next stage. So we've got one more painting stage to go, which will be, obviously, like I've just said, do all the flesh, the hair, the neckerchief. We I always paint the base brown, and as I've got some brown paint, I'll I'll probably do that uh, now. Uh, I just find painting a base, uh, the base of your metal or plastic, when you come to, to put it down, especially if you're doing like rows of Napoleonics or any figures in rows and that. And you're not always going to get all your sand and your, or whatever you use to 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 cover the bases. At least if they're painted in some form of any colour, really, you know, dark dark brown, sandy, whatever whatever base type of things you're putting on. Uh, it just gives a you know a bit of camouflage to the base. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, you know, I say I'm, I know it's not you know <laughs> not the most enthralling of of videos that people put up. Uh, but I just, as I say, I, I quite enjoy videos like that, you know, as, as long as people aren't, you know, being too loud or too <laughs> too sweary or too, you know, that, I mean, that's just me. I just, I just, I just, you know, don't like it too in your face. You know, if, we, if you're painting soldiers or modelling, it's nice and calm <laughs> most of the time when things are going right. Uh, you know, so I just, I just warble along as I'm painting. But I do intend to keep doing these now. Um, there does seem some interest on you know in the viewing figures and that you know people seem interested in in it um as i say i could do an entire figure i may do that you know i may just um just bite the bullet and learn how to get cut these down to literally half an hour and paint the whole figure in one go uh but as i said to you guys you know um i'm not really got the Oh, we're getting all the noises in the background today. Uh, I'm not really rigged up here to. I don't want to turn this into a, a photographic studio. You, you know what I mean? It's it's just a bloke on his bench, really. Um, I, I know it it works for people, and I know you can suddenly suck in thousands of viewers and and have millions of subs and and you know probably do well out the advertising out of it. To be honest with you, but and yes, I could really do with people doing well out the advertising, but. I don't know. It's just it's just not really me. I, I, I'm, I've got my small little cluttered bench here. I've got a, a spray booth at the side of me for when I'm doing my modelling. Uh, the other end of the table, I've got piles of boxes of um, the paints I'm using, other paints I'm using, uh, boxes of soldiers that haven't yet been sold or or you know I haven't put them up for sale. And then there's client soldiers all just keeping the dust off and putting them in the boxes and that. Yeah, so it, you know to try and add extra lights in here and extra you know videos and stuff it's it's it just takes away from from doing what i, I enjoy doing so uh we'll see I, you know you know me i'll say something and it'll be completely changed next week you suddenly might find gav's doing all singing or dancing videos but uh don't hold your breath right look after yourselves uh coming up we've got a 18 millimeter um reveal of the first unit uh, i've only put the color on uh, earlier this morning so uh um that's just got to be all tidied up uh, but that unit you probably see friday uh what else have we got uh there'll be a update on my one in three fifty scale 
uh, frigates, although most of you guys coming here for the painting won't be interested in that. <laughs> but but there will be a one in thirty five one in three fifty scale Royal Navy frigate update. Uh, there'll also be I've I've been beavering away in the background on lots of projects. Uh, I've painted the base painting on all the tracks for the FT seventeen had done, uh, just not weathered obviously because they've got to be wrapped around the track uh, the the thing yet. The tank itself that's what i was after uh, i've got an exhaust i've been painting up the exhaust oh. guys sorry for any noise like papping horns it's not zombies taking over the world it's cretins i think uh right where was i left <laughs> right yeah um i'm pooting away very slowly i'm getting a, a very tiny base done for the pink panther land rover that i've still got sitting there uh, but that won't be up for show for another week or two yet but yeah, the FT17 is is really coming together now. It's on it's on the last lap. I shall have a, once I've got the tracks on that, I'll put a video up of that as well. Um, what else have we got? So, yeah, that's about it really. <laughs> I've got some some. I could show you some more Napoleonics, but they're only the same as I'm doing. So I'm probably just going to do videos of those as I do a complete unit in their base because they're all the same figure. Uh, and even when I do the Grenadiers of the Old Guard for this commission, they're obviously they're just Grenadiers compared to, compared to Shasiro Pede. So, uh, oh, if you think I haven't been working on the Tommy's War figures, I have been. My mara Greg Riley's made me some uh, metal uh, uh, metal roofing, uh, corrugated metal, that's what I was after, just for a, a bit of a, a thing that's going on that uh, base. Uh, I've done the first window frames for that, uh, Nothing fits, nothing's at the right scale or size, but they're going on. Uh, and I've got another one to do, um, but we'll have a look at that. Once I've got the walls actually stuck up, I've been keeping the walls separate while I've stick bits on them, uh, and then I'll bring that together. So that's probably about another week or so away from showing you at least uh, the vignette, vignette, vignette base. Uh, I've still got to finish the other figure off yet. Um, but So that is actually going along in the background as well. Right guys, look after yourselves again. <laughs> we'll catch each other soon on another video.